Okay. Well, I'm sorry about that. We got uh, something happened in moving my microphone and I got cut off. Uh, but we're live again, and uh, hopefully I'll just wait till you find me. <laughs> just, I don't know, I don't know. Um, there we go. Oh uh, yeah, we're live. Yeah, there's the first one on. I'm just waiting for you to come on on your your uh, on my feed here, so I can see that I'm live. Had some problems. Uh, yeah, there we go. Had some problems with the with the connection tonight for some reason. And uh, this is our final, uh, let me see, Doug. Yeah, see, you've just come on from Brentford, Brantford, Ontario, Canada. Thanks, Doug. You're, you're the first one on. You weren't the first one on, but you are the first one on now because we had problems with the connections. Um, our theme today is what is our theme? You will get through this. You will get through it. Uh, uh, Barbara, <laughs> I can see and hear you at last. Good evening, Emma. See you all coming on. Uh, Barbara Haynes. We've got two Barbaras there. Barbie and Barbara. Ba 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 Barbara and Margie. Hug. Good morning from Oklahoma. Good morning to you, Margie. When are you flying out, Margie? Are you flying out tomorrow? Um, Kimo, good evening to you, Kimo, again. <laughs> what can I do? What can I do? I try my best to make this a perfect broadcast. It never goes, never goes the way I want it to go. Um, who else do we have on? Bobby Haynes, good afternoon, John and, and all from Indiana. Uh, Kimo, yeah, good evening to you again, Kimo. Right, I seem to be repeating myself. Forgive me if you're watching on recording. We had a few technical difficulties and uh, I lost the connection, um, but we're back again. Isaiah 35 verse 4 is our um, main text today in the book of Isaiah. Uh, Joyce, uh, <laughs> the USA, <laughs> wait, do you know what, Joyce? You would not believe the paperwork. The paperwork you have to do just to get on a plane. Uh, Margie Harv, you're leaving at 5 a.m. my time on Friday. Looking forward to the trip. Yeah, looking forward to meeting up with you, Margie. I think you're staying in the same hotel as John and I, so that should be interesting. We may get a chance to have some chats over breakfast. Uh, Diane, Evelyn Clark, uh, good evening, to, uh, good afternoon to you, uh, Diane. Uh, John and Worldwide Tribe of Whispers, blessings to all from Barry. Uh, Rupert Clark, Rupert, good to have you, good to have you with us tonight. Uh, good evening from Clandrindod, Clandrindod, Wells. Uh, it, it reminds me of Clandudno. Now, isn't there something about that word clan, that first, those first few letters? Is that mountain or something like that? Uh, Rupert Clark, yeah. yeah, sorry, Rupert, I'm mentioning you twice there. Uh, Catherine Sarg 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 <laughs> Catherine from uh, Canada. Whereabouts in, Ca in Canada, Catherine, if you can tell us. It's nice to know where everybody's from. Um, good. No, see, I don't know to say good morning, good afternoon to you. But anyway, I'll say good morning. Good morning to you, Catherine, uh, from Canada. Oh, Canada. Alberta, that's right, Alberta. Yes, isn't that the um, isn't that the farming fields there, the grain, uh, the granary fields of Canada, Alberta? Uh, Peggy, Marlene, good morning and blessings from Marietta, Ohio. That sounds French, Peggy, as well. Uh, you know, Marlene sounds a French name. Also, the town, uh, Marietta. Oh, hi, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> uh, good noon from Indiana, Linda Evelyn, uh, Catherine Sarkfield, yes, Rosie Holder. <laughs> See, you're finding us all now. You're, you're all finding us. Uh, Rosie from Cardiff, good afternoon to you, Rosie. Uh, just reading you as you come on. Uh, Kimo, I had difficulties too at my, work to, at my work today. As there is a problem, I was not able to solve. Is that what you do, Kimo? 
Do you solve problems with connections? <laughs> oh, Jella Thomas, evening, night, morning, uh, noon, afternoon, USA, and ding dongs, and all the whispers. I let you into a secret, Jella. It's it's good more. It's Good Morning North America is the title of this devotional. <laughs> same same theme, same reading. <laughs> so anyway. Um, this is our last one tonight, um, and then we we have a two week break, and we're back on the twenty eighth, the last day of February. I'll put something up there. Uh, it was a problem with connections, Kim. Yeah, uh, I'll put something up there a day or two before we go live, just to remind you all. So that's a two week break. Uh, back again on the 28th of February and then we'll go into another six week session now I'm presently using um, I'm using this book let me show you I hear his whisper and I don't know whether you can see that but that's where we're uh, that's where we're up to so we just got those I can't, I can't get that focused. Um, that's where we're up to. So maybe we'll finish it on the last, uh, on the next six week portion. But um, we're in the book of Isaiah today. Uh, but you know what I'd like to do? There's two things. I'd like. Do you know, we just don't have enough time. Just don't have enough time, do we? Um, you know, we're doing tw twice a day. And, and it's not that that the uh, broadcasts go maybe half an hour, maybe to 45, 50 minutes. It's all the preparation that goes on beforehand. So to do a broadcast, you're talking about uh, not counting the actual time live. You're talking about a two-hour prep. Um, so that's two, that's four hours. So do you understand it's difficult? And then I get to the weekend and I really want to give Gene time and, um, uh, you know, so trying to make the Saturday and Sunday um, free. And, you know, I've, I've told even Debbie, you know, who has uh, housewarmings, you, you know, she has a Saturday night uh, every other week or something like that. And I told Debs, you know, Debs, i got to give that weekend free just to relax, spend time with Jean. And also my way for two weeks now. And Jean can't travel because of uh, blood clots. And she's on blood thinners. So uh, John Mark will be with me. I'm rambling. I know I'm rambling. I, I sense I'm rambling. I'm just trying to explain to you the mechanics of it. Uh, so I pray, if you would, just pray that God will just extend it. Because some of the stuff we touch on in, in the... Um, in these devotionals, which are a, really a meditation, you could just spend a, a whole one hour or two hours just on one subject, even like today's subject, and on the text Isaiah 35 verse 4, you know, just when you begin to unwrap the Hebrew layers on it. And I was saying to you, Kimo, you know, it's great with the, the Hebrew numbers and clicking on it and getting the strongs. But then when you, when you, get into the letters and and see what makes up the word and the numerical values depending on the holy spirit now that's very important because it's not just a formula it is the holy spirit giving you revelation saying to you i want you to look at this word and then he begins to uh, teach you on it and don't we have i wrote something uh, a few weeks ago uh, the Holy Spirit is the ultimate teacher. He's the ultimate teacher who will guide you into all truth. He is capable of getting the message across even when we stumble, even when we get tongue-tied, even when we trip over our words, when you're trying to share what God is sharing with you. He's capable. And do you know what the wonderful thing is? I always remember Martin Lloyd-Jones saying, uh, I heard him in uh, Liverpool, must have been the late 60s, just before he died. And 
he was saying about the wonderful thing about the word of God is when, when he's preaching it, he says, when I'm teaching the word, he says, the most wonderful thing is that God can take what I say and have two people sitting together and he can apply it in different ways. Isn't that wonderful? The Holy Spirit can apply it in different ways and he can apply it to one person in a completely different way to another person. The same word, the same word. So, you know, coming back to that, it's it's just difficult in how to squeeze it in because I don't like to just take it up. You know, if I say we're going to do a devotional and we're going to do it twice a day or, you know, we're going to do a teaching and it's got to be consecutive, I have to commit to that. I have to commit to that time period. Um, it's important. It's important, church. Anyway, I've been yapping on. Before we go on, maybe if the Lord allows us to pray for Korea tonight or this morning, uh, let's go to the text and I'll show you what I mean. Um, and I'm just going to, I penciled some stuff out here just to help me because otherwise you've got to think on, on your feet. But um, I want to take this word uh, in the very first verse. Well, let me, let me just come further down here and I want to just take the verse first. We're talking about Isaiah. <clears throat> 35. And verse 4. I just underline that. And I, I started to do this this morning. And you know, as far I got as far as this. This first line. Say... To the anxious. Now this really challenged me. Um, and I'll explain it in a minute. Uh, yes Debbie. I, I agree with you. And you need to rest as well. Anytime. Even if it's less time or days in a week. The teachings are fabulous. Thank you Debbie. Thank you. Um, we all struggle you know, wondering, um, are you getting the thing across? Say to the anxious, um, and fearful. That's as far as I got with this morning's verse, when I began to write it out. Uh, let me just underline that. And this is the word. This word, say. Now, if, if you were to look at that with, you know, a Greek way of thinking or in your English mindset or your American mindset, um, that word say talks about speaking, doesn't it? It talks about speaking. And I'll come back to that in a minute. But uh, if we wanted to do that in Hebrew... If I want to take the word say in Hebrew, say, <laughs> uh, forgive the pun, uh, let's just go back to this. Uh, now, I don't want you reading my other notes. I've penciled this out to help me. Say I took that first word. Say. Now, don't forget, in Hebrew, I keep saying this. I have to keep saying it because I'm talking maybe to people that are just tuning in for the first time. Hebrew, you write from right to left. And this first letter is the Aleph. I'm, I'm spelling out to you now the word say. The Mem. And then we have the Riash. Now, if I was to count those letters because each one has a numerical value, and I'm not going to count the zeros, okay? I'm just going to take the first numerical number. So in this one, it's 1. Now, this second letter is 40, so I'm just going to take the 4. 1 plus 4. And then this one is 200, but again, we're going to cross the noughts off. Equals... Seven. Now, 
what I love, what I really love about the living letters, I love the picture value. I love the picture value because your brain can absorb and keep more of a picture than say words. If I said words to you, what did the preacher preach on during 1994? I can't remember anything of it. Can't remember anything of it, but you know what I do remember? I remember the pictorial, I remember the pictures, I remember the movies, as it were, you know, of the manifestations of the people. Sticks in the mind. People still remember the yardsticks I used to use and the cowboy hat and the sunglasses. Do you understand? Because it's picture. It's picture and it really it sticks in your mind. And a picture's worth a thousand words, a movie is worth a million. But I also love Let's just go back to this. The numerical value. 1 plus 4 is 5 plus 2 equals 7. Now what's very interesting is that 7, if we were to take the letter uh, Zayin, and it's a weapon in picture form. Sorry for the writing, it's so small. It's a weapon. Uh, uh, and it represents the number seven. It's a sword, if you like. So when you say, uh, when you speak words, you're actually using, you're actually cutting through stuff. Okay, so right in the opening of this verse, it says, what did, what did we say? Let me just go down to this. I'm going backwards and forwards. Uh, Isaiah 35 verse 4, say to the anxious and fearful. So you're speaking something out. Okay, now, again, let's just go back to this. Uh, this number seven is the heartbeat. I started, you know, uh, in my preps what, before we go live. Um, you know, I get up in the morning and... Um, Sometimes it's two, you know, the heartbeat of God. And then I go back to bed if I've got an hour to spare. But as I began to study the word, the Lord began to say to me, I want you to, I want you to listen, John, for my heart beat. Amen. I want you to listen for my heartbeat. Well, what do you mean, Lord? Well, there are certain things that are very close to my heart, that beat very close to my heart. And one of them is this number seven. Now, what's very interesting about the number seven, and I, I wrote it from a, uh, I got it from, I don't know what I Googled it. I can't remember where I got this from. The seven, let me write it out. Uh, The seventh day. Or the seven day week. Has no. Can you see that? Correlation. That's a big word, isn't it? Have I spelled that right? Correlation. Two, any movement, just bear with me because I'm writing this out and then having to speak it as well, of the earth. And by that I mean the moon. You know the moon controls the tides or the sun. Or other astronomical. Now, forgive me here if I if I spell this wrong, because I'm, I'm trying to move quickly. Body. Why why wasn't a week? In other words, we have seven days in a week. Why is it? That even in, you know, unsaved, 
in this uh, evil world, we still count Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And by the way, all those names are names of Roman gods. Um, why is it that we still have seven? You know, when there is no, you can't say, well, it's because of this, it's because of the moon or the sun. Why is it that we still have seven? Um, no, it's God's perfect number. It's God's perfect number. Now, uh, very interesting because I read somewhere, let me just see if I can just find my notes here. Uh, it's... Hello? Hello? No. Can you believe this? <laughs> Is that Mr. Just? <laughs> Am I still live? Are you still hearing me? Okay. I, I, why is it? Why is it all these things? Uh, that's where water and wine. What were we saying? I have also visited once. Water. Um, I remember you in Moncton, New Brunswick. Ah, that's where I've seen you. Okay. Forgive me for that. Forgive me for that interruption. I've got to switch this phone off. I've got the phone. That was a guy trying to sell me something. Is that Mr. Johnson? Now, what was I saying? Why is it then the number seven? Well, six days labor. The seventh day was God's heartbeat. Now, the root of this word, you know, the heartbeat of God, is really, or the root of this word say in Hebrew is really, you know, being transparent with one another. It's the hardest thing to do, isn't it? It's the hardest thing to do. I remember the first time I went to America, uh, and funnily enough, it was with John, I think it was with John Mark. Uh, first time I went with John Mark to America, and we went to, a, you know, one of those where you help yourself, a buffet, and we're in the line and we get to the checkout and uh, first of all they didn't understand John because his accent was so strong we get to the checkout and we pay the bill and the lady says to us uh, have a nice day and I came away I came I came away from it thinking how wonderful how wonderful these people are in America you know, saying, have a nice day. Isn't that wonderful? But after a while, I realized it was just something that was parrot fashioned. Have you ever had a, a, a dispute? I, I remember a dispute with a customer in front of me with the uh, checkout lady. And it got rather heated. I can't remember whether they resolved it or not. But then at the end of it, the lady said, you know, the checkout lady said to the lady, have a nice day. And I thought, that's strange. Do you, do you understand the root word of this word say is to be transparent? It's really to say what you mean. Can I say that again? It's to say what you mean. You know, it's the hardest thing to do that we can uh, smile at one another, say things to one another that we don't really mean. This really challenged me. This has really challenged me because this not, it's 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 the root word of the he, the root Hebrew word of this word say comes from this transparency, this resting, this number seven mentioned. What did I say? Eight hundred. How many times was it? 800 and odd times. 860 times in the Bible. The word say. And I think of a verse that says in 1 John that if we walk in the light, you know, his blood cleanses us and we have fellowship with God and we have fellowship with one another. The problem is that oftentimes we say things we don't mean just to please the other person. <laughs> And sometimes we say things like, you know, say, uh, we quote things, uh, well, I am redeemed 
but we really don't mean it. We really don't grasp it. It really is not our heartbeat. Do you understand? And it challenged me. It challenged me deeply because sometimes, you know, when you're having to correct people, you know, especially in leadership, I don't think people fully understand the pressures of leadership. Uh, I've been a pastor for 12 years. And there's two sides of the story. Oftentimes, you know, I've preached about control and stuff from the church, but oftentimes it's also the people in the Pope, in the pew, that just want the preacher to say what they want to hear. Am I, am I hitting the point here? It's, it's something that really, it's the heartbeat of God. Now, let me tell you something. When I had heart surgery, it's a strange thing, really, because the surgery wasn't the difficult part. Do you understand? The surgery wasn't the difficult part. The hard part afterwards was the emotional because, you know, your heart had been tampered with. And there's something, I, 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 I'm I, not a medical student. I'm, I'm not a doctor or a surgeon. And I know that people will, people that I've spoken to that have had heart surgery say the most difficult time is afterwards is the emotional because your emotions... Do you, do you understand what we're trying to say here? Say, what's the scripture say? Say to the anxious and fearful. Now, we can say things to people, I'll pray for you. But do you really pray? Do you really pray? Or is it just become, have a nice day? Do you understand? Have a nice day. <laughs> it's empty words. Empty words. Got to have some passion and emotion in it. It's got to be a heartbeat in it. And there has to be a love that overflows to one another. It's again this relationship on a practical level. Now, uh, I think that's it really because I'm, I'm going on a bit too, too long here. Um, but this is what God's been challenging me on and to challenge the, to challenge the church, to challenge the body of Christ to look, be very careful what you say. Not only in a negative form, because you're you're creating stuff out of the invisible, but be very careful what you say to one another. Be get very careful, uh, you know, that your word is your word. Do you understand? Years ago, uh, businesses, businessmen would do a deal on the shake of a hand because they knew that they could trust the person's word. There's got to be that, you understand? And uh, this, I know, I know. This is a subject that's not easy because we're all guilty of it. Every single one of us, including myself, we're all guilty on it, of it because we want to be pleasing people and we don't want people to feel bad about us. And that's one of the hardest things. People don't fully understand the hardest things as a pastor is when you have to speak into a person's life and they've gone off the rails a little bit and you have to speak, but you have to say it in such a way that you don't damage the person. In fact, the scriptures say that when you're correcting a brother or a sister, you have to watch yourself. <laughs> it has to start with you because it can come back on you. In, in other words, it's that saying, people that live in glass houses should not throw stones. <laughs> oh, oh, oh do you know what I'm trying to say? Uh, uh, thank you, Barbara. You'll really be praying for you and your family whilst you're away, particularly Jean. Um, now, my sound, no, my sound hasn't gone, Rupert. Um, uh, let me just see and just see. Uh, Doug Farron is telling us that the lunar month is 29.5. I can hear. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, do you understand what I'm trying to say? That it's very difficult, isn't it? 
but 1 John says, unless we walk in the light with one another, you know, if we say we have fellowship with God and we don't walk in the light with one another, that is the that is the, where the rubber meets the road. That's where the rubber meets the road. Or are you just saying things because you want to be liked and you don't want to hurt the person? So when you say, you know, when you're correcting, you know, as a leader, when you're correcting somebody, you have to do it in the spirit of humility. You can't do it from up here looking down. You have to come down to the brother, the sister's level and, and speak, you know, with humility, knowing that the hardest thing is knowing that your flesh and blood, you know, you have failings. But God has given you this uh, uh, appointment, this, uh, what, what do we call it, uh, commission, you know, to give his word. Do you understand what it really means to be commissioned? How we give out uh, ordination papers so easily and yet we don't realize the cost that if you're in leadership that I don't, you know that you will be required to give an account not only for your own walk but to give an account for those who God has put in your care. Anyway, uh, that's it, that's it. Uh, it's... Let me just finish on this, and then um, it's to walk. Oh, my pen. It is to walk in honesty. with one another. Now, I don't mean railing one another when you fall out. And, oh, well, I've got to put it right. I love you, brother, but I'm telling you in love and you say it in such a spirit. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the heartbeat of God. I'm talking about God's love shed abroad in your heart for God and for your brothers and sisters. Amen. Okay. Uh, there we go. There we go. Let's um, let's see how we fix. Yeah, I think we can do. Uh, we can go over to um, Korea, and I want you to just join with me now. Thanks, Rupert, uh, for letting me know that. Um, okay, we're going to go to Korea. I'm going to put some music on in the background. And I want you to do what we usually do. Just join me with him. Join me in prayer. And we're not going to stay too long on this tonight or this morning. I just got to get the sound right here. Okay, Father God, I thank you. I thank you that you have put gifts in the body of Christ that you have joined us to one another. That, Father, you have given us a ministry of reconciliation, that we can pray for nations, we can pray for one another, for reconciliation. We can pray for nations, for reconciliation. And I pray this word over Korea. I pray for your reconciliation to be released, the spirit of reconciliation over South Korea. Move this pan out. And North Korea, Lord. A spirit of reconciliation in the name of Yeshua. So if you could start to pray with me now. And uh, just begin to lift up this nation. Begin to believe God, you know, with passion, with fire. That this nation will be unified in the name of Yeshua. Amen, amen, amen. Don't leave it too long because there is a delay on the comments and uh, 
<laughs> I don't want your stuff coming up on the on the comment panel and then we find you know that we've moved on it's good to pray while we've got the map up and the first one to pray here is Joyce Joyce thank you for coming on father you love these people he does Joyce he does he loves them remember that he loves them you love these people draw them together pour out your spirit upon them upon the Koreans Lord in the name of Yeshua thank you Joyce uh, Jella restoration for Korea yes 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 we believe with you Jella restoration for Korea yes let's just add our amens to it yes Lord Madeline unity in Christ unity we pray especially in the body Lord as well in the body of Christ let there be unity in Korea in the name of Yeshua Emma thank you Emma bless the people of this land I pray for the people to be able to think for themselves you know what you hit the nail on the head there Emma we just pray for that we pray for freedom of of speech freedom of thought Lord freedom there be no walls break dividing walls we pray in Jesus name that they will be able to think for themselves and all fear to disappear uh, Debbie peace and multiplication in their finances father that's a wonderful prayer to pray in fact we pray for that for ourselves as well <laughs> Debbie peace shalom and multiplication both on Korea and everyone that's listening Lord we take the overflow in Jesus name Rupert he has broken down divided wall of hostility making the two one we quote that scripture we release that word father over North and South Korea amen amen and I'm Barbie Barbara Pugh thank you Bob so much pain and hurt Lord we just speak to the pain and hurt of generational stuff that's gone on in the soil we pray the blood of Jesus heal the land Heal the land, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Thank you, Barbara. Uh, Doug, Lord, bless Korea with kingdom zozo. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank oh, I love the way everybody prays. I love it that you all bring a peace. You know, rather than one person praying, I love it that every one of you brings something for this country. Uh, with kingdom sozo saved healed delivered lord in yeshua's name and richardson yes just that one word and shalom it says everything it says everything shalom over north korea shalom over south korea uh judy i was thinking about this word i was thinking about this word the other day judy ask of me we ask for this nation Lord we ask for this nation of Korea north and south we're asking right now for this nation be saved in the name of Yeshua asking for it now in Jesus name thank you Judy thank you that's a wonderful verse wonderful promise to speak over Terry's in agreement with us from Minnesota thank you Terry Rosie's lifting up the prayers let the incense go up saints let the incense go up uh, Peggy Marlene I pray yeah this is a good prayer Peggy to pray we pray for hopeless hopelessness to loose its power and for you God to bring hope to them in the name of Yeshua in the name of Yeshua 
we pray. Terry, yeah, peace of God. The peace of God over the land. And Linda, your will, your way, your design in your divine time, Father. Let it be released. Let it be released in the name of Yeshua. Debbie, break poverty mindsets. Break it right now, Father, in the name of Yeshua. We break it. We take our authority. We speak your word over this nation. North Korea, South Korea, let them be one. Let the poverty be lifted in Jesus' name off their mindsets. Terry, yeah, blessings over Korea. Blessings, Anna Monda, lifting it up. Thank you, Anna. Let's lift it up. Lift it up, Lord. We lift it up. We lift this nation up to you in Jesus' name. Terry, do it, Lord. And again, Janice, limitless, limitless, limitless. We release it, limitless faith and restoration. Be released to this nation. Amen. 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 And all the people said, ding dong, boing, hey, and ho. Okay. Let's have today's reading. Um, trying to fit everything in in such a short time. Got a lot to do tonight. Um, you will get through this. David was a man after my heart, a man who was honest about how he felt, who knew I wouldn't be offended by his questions, a man who went through trials and pain but found me on the battlefield. It was out of tremendous oops, opposition that he came to know my faithfulness. But that doesn't mean that he didn't occasionally question it. Your character and resilience are forged from the trials you face. When you face them with me, like a diamond whose beauty is birthed out of pressure, so is your beauty coming forth from the trials that feel like they're squeezing you it's okay to be honest with me and one another <laughs> in the spirit of love. <laughs> I can handle it. Out of the testing of your faith, trust is born. It's only when you need me to step in as your saviour that you truly understand what it is to be saved. The enemy thinks he's drowning you with problems when really he's presenting the perfect opportunity for me to step in and prove my faithfulness. Beloved, I know it feels hard right now, but you will come through this shining with the brilliance of my glory. And then our text is Isaiah 35 verse 4, Say, to the anxious and fearful. Be strong and never afraid. Look, here comes your God. He is breaking through to give you victory. He comes to avenge your enemies with divine retribution. He comes to save you. Isn't that wonderful? Isaiah 35 verse for ding dong, boing, hey, and ho. Oh. And so end of our last session for this portion of 2000 and ding dong 22. Be back on the 28th of February and keep safe, keep praising the Lord, keep blessing the Lord. And for those of you in Jacksonville, looking forward to meeting up with you on Saturday the 12th. Amen. 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 Thank you, Emma. I uh, hope you have a lovely time in the USA and that you and John Mark get to enjoy all the tasties and your favourite <laughs> your favorite coffees. Thanks, church. Thanks for joining me. Lord bless you. Keep you. Cause his face 
to shine upon you and grant you all the ding-dongs, all the boings, all the haze that he has prepared for you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Thank you. We give you praise.